point. Easing sails in two, one, easing sails. Go hoist. This is the Sailing World on Water, February the 18th, 2022. Here are the highlights of the sport of sailing in the last seven days. Two main regattas in the last week, one in the Northern Hemisphere, the 44 Cup and the other in the Southern, the Australian Nationals for 18-foot skiffs. This is the lead in race to their championships, the JJ Giltonans. We started this show with action on board a 44 Cup contender. Sadly no water passed beneath the keels of the 10-strong 44-cup fleet on the opening day of their first regatta of the 2022 season off Porto Calero, Lanzarote as they were held ashore due to no wind. After the zero-wind opening day of the 44-cup, forecasts indicated day two might repeat this. In fact, after an hour's delay, an easterly filled in and built to 12 to 14 knots, allowing three good races to be held. Entry is open for 2022 Volvo Cork Week, celebrating the tricentenary of the world's oldest yacht club, the Royal Cork Yacht Club. Since 1978, Cork Week has been the venue for many epic battles on the water and legendary Craig Ashore. The 300th birthday celebrations for the Royal Cork adds a unique dimension and everybody is welcome. The 52 Super Series is globally recognized as the world's leading Grand Prix monohull racing circuit. As the competition has steadily grown in recent years, so too has its approach and commitment to reducing the environmental impact of the event. We had part one of Boris Herman and his Militia meet the team last week and now here is part two. For races were held on day three of the 44 Cup Calero Marinas in perfect trade winds conditions, sun, waves and easterly winds at times gusting to 20 knots. Going into the final day of the 44 Cup Calero Marinas, Igor Lars Siref powered by Hrasnik 1860 held a strong 11-point lead. Ultimately the Slovenian team did win in Lanzarote, but for several tense minutes victory seemed to have fully slipped through their fingers. The final golden race in the Australian 18-footer nationals was held on Sydney Harbour and ex-champion, Sev Jarvin came through and won for the eighth time. Our French correspondent, Christophe Favreau was there and talked to him. Now over to the 44 Cup in Lanzarote, day one. The 44 Cup season starts this year where it left off in 2021 in Porto Calero, Lanzarote. With 10 of the most competitive sailing teams gathered in the Canary Islands, everyone was eager to hit the start line at full speed. But on the first day of racing though, a lack of wind didn't allow for any racing to take place, and the boats didn't even manage to leave the dock. Today, it was a very easy decision for me because there was no wind at all. <laughs> we just had a gust up to five knots, but it, to, it was just for five minutes. And then the wind dropped completely, which was like a mirror. Then we decided to stop and we will try to race tomorrow. Stay tuned when the first races of the 44 Cup season are rescheduled for tomorrow.
The first actual day of 44 Cup racing here in Lanzarote saw 10 crews on the dock at Puerto Calero Marina, hopeful to go racing despite a forecast that did not look promising. Yeah, well, apparently the trade winds are coming, so we're kind of waiting around for that. And uh, that'll come out of the east, northeast uh, for us here on uh, the island. If that doesn't work, we'll go down to the channel between the islands and look for some breeze. It always funnels through there, so we'll find something today, I'm, I'm pretty confident. In fact, after just an hour's delay, three races were held in a breeze that built to 14 knots. Among the 10 boats are the newcomers on La Pericolosa, using the class's own trial boat to get a feel for 44 Cup racing. Today's three races had three different winners in Team Aqua, C-Ref and Artemis Racing, which now top the leaderboard separated by just three points. Right behind them is a triple tie between Peninsula Racing, Corisma and Team Nika. Conditions are set to stabilise over the weekend, with the trade winds filling in, promising some nail-biting racing. Today was perfect. Uh, not a lot of waves, so great sailing. I must say, first day, uh, usually we are behind. Today it was different, so uh, a really good start. There's always a battle. <laughs> but it was nice, you know. Um, we are one point in front, you know, so nothing is decided, of course. Today was a great day. Um, nice to get back out on the water. Uh, breeze built steadily until the third race and then started coming off again, which was great to have. Um, we started well, um, got two clean starts in the first two races and were competitive. Third race was a little bit more complicated. 44 Cup action resumes tomorrow. Don't miss it.
So come along, lads. Come to Cork. We are waiting for you with open arms. You. Sustainability has become an integral part of our lives on the 52 Super Series, now woven into the fabric of our community. The 52 fleet is setting a nice stage for other people to maybe see what we're doing and, and go from there. So it's nice to be able to pass on that type of information um, and it works really well how we've been doing it. We take inspiration and learn from other global influencers and use our audience to share the message. It's fantastic to see the Super Series taking such great initiatives on the plastics issue. I haven't seen a single plastic bottle since I've arrived um, and so I can see that it's been fully embraced by all of the athletes and the teams here. It's pushing the limits of what a series can do so it's very impressive. Awareness has increased about the acute problems facing our fragile ocean environment and as an extended family we do take our responsibility to lead by example. We continue to deliver pragmatic, practical ideas. Previous years where we were using biodegradable plastics that were coming into the market, we've since moved away from that and are now using constantly sort of reusable items for the coffee machines and things like that. Rather than sending food for composting, increasingly we pass on unneeded food to local towns and cities, feeding individuals who need it. Working with our local stakeholders, the positive legacy we leave is long-lasting. And we look to the long term together, all sharing a common goal, knowing that all our small positive changes can make a big difference. Everybody's trying to pull their way, you know, learning slowly as we go and, uh, you know, we all do our bit and over the last couple of years, you know, with the help of 11th Hour and everybody involved, you know, we've really pushed everybody's knowledge and I think everybody has an awareness but everybody's knowledge is now increasing and it's everywhere you look. It's really a thought process and everybody's buying into it. You know, everybody supports each other on it. The power of sport, human endeavour and teamwork, all working together. My name is Kirsten and I'm the Miss Money Penny of the team Malaysia. Hi, I'm Chris. I'm part of the design team and I'm mainly in charge of stability, weight estimates and the rule compliance. Hello, I'm Antoine, a boat builder. Hi, I'm Lucia and I do logistics, events and social media for Team Malaysia. Yeah, my name is Ryan Braemeyer. My role within the team is deck hardware, the mast, everything above the deck basically. The challenge, however, is that the tech structures are very different in each country. My biggest challenges on the team right now are all the logistics around it, especially with the COVID. By accident, I bumped into Boris on a beach and I asked him if I could work for him. And that's it. Now I'm here. Part of the design team uh, working to create the fastest Emoji 60 ever. Up on your feet, this is a shakedown.
On the penultimate day of the 44 Cup Puerto Calero, four intense races were held in the trade wind conditions for which the Canary Islands are famous. As the easterly wind steadily built to 20 knots and the sea withered, it was Aleph Racing, Artemis Racing, Atom Tavatui and Team Nika which claimed the four bullets of the day. Testament to the competitiveness of the one design fleet, all ten boats have now scored at least one podium finish, including the new teams on La Periculosa and Archu. Despite the close competition, one team has shone, with Igor Lars Siref holding a massive 11 point lead going into the final day. The following her are five teams, Team Nika, Team Aqua, Peninsula Racing, Artemis Racing and Aleph Racing, all just within two points of second place. All stand a good chance of reaching the regatta's podium tomorrow. It was not so easy for us at the start yesterday and also today in the morning. The last two races we were quite fast. The second last we got penalty at the start, so we were behind the whole fleet and gradually gaining and gaining and gaining, so the boat speed was good, finally. It's very important how you finish the day, and not how you start. We hope with, that tomorrow will be our best day. Stay tuned for more brisk trade wind conditions and fierce racing on the final day of the event. The last day of the 44 Cup Calero Marinas started with Aleph's race against time to get their boat ready after she was damaged during close racing yesterday. This battle included a lot of overnight work for the technical team. Going into the final day, CRF was in a strong position holding an 11 point lead, but behind it was tight with 8 boats still in contention for a podium finish. got three races to finish off the regatta and uh, there's a lot of people out there that can that can certainly reach the podium. Seref have a pretty good lead uh, but the rest of us are really really fighting for it. In this in this class much like others trying to be consistent is is kind of key because uh, you can win a race and then you can very easily finish last in a race. Seref didn't have the best first two races today with bullets going to Atom Tavatui and Charisma. As a result, Igor Lars' team started the final race with just a four-point advantage over Team Nika. Nika did all she could and comfortably won the last race, and hers was the standout performance of the day with a 2-2-1 scoreline. Meanwhile, in the last race, Siref started last, but made an impressive recovery to finish second, enough to win them the event three points ahead of Team Nika, and with Artemis racing third. It's great great to win the first event in the season. I think it's great racing here. It's always like this. Uh, you are never sure in this class, so everything can happen uh, in each moment. So, uh, you know, until it's over, it's over. With seven boats winning races, this event proved that the 44 Cup has reached new heights in its competition. Racing resumes in May in Cascai, Portugal. See you there. Our French World on Water videographer, Christophe Favreau, was at the Australian Nationals Golden Race and he spoke to the winners. He starts with Seve Jarvin.
So CV, uh, apparently it's your seventh victory. It's the number that you like because it's kind of your uh, number of title on the JJ. How would you reflect on that uh, national championship? Um, that was tricky. That was the hardest one. That double point thing is sort of, you're always on your toes the whole race. You know, you can have one mistake and that shifty stuff and then you lose 200 metres. We sort of saw that in the first race. Yeah. Had a good start, got off and then got a little out of phase then before we knew it was six. So we just had to get off the line and then keep a real good eye on where our fleet is, the guys we had to beat. You know, sometimes we took a bit of a loss to get to them, but you know, as long as we kept them behind us, that was the main thing. You had the injury before uh, stepping uh, on the boat uh, uh, just for the Nationals. It's a pretty nice recovery. Yeah, I think the first time ever I go out and it's bloody quite hard. I'm quite old. I think I'm getting old, fatter. So, yeah, it was good to get a couple of weeks selling with these guys. Basically, well, that was the first race I've done with the big rig, actually, today. It was the first one. So, you know, it was good. Those yeah. guys are a pleasure to sail with. And how do you uh, watch the JJ coming now? Uh, we still got a fair bit of work to do, I think. Like we saw today, we were, you know, it's still a lot. We left a lot out there in the light stuff. We're obviously a heavier crew, so it feels like once we get hiking, we're pretty comfortable, but in that stuff, technique wise and stuff, it's getting in sync. You know, we've only, as I said, that's the first time we sailed on that rig, so we'll keep chipping away and hopefully keep getting better. It was the, cen the century of uh, the Nationals. Uh, I think you have. Uh, on the JJ point of view, seven title. If you eventually win the next one, it's going to be eight title. Uh, it would put you into deep into 18 history. You're already in, but I mean, regarding numbers, I don't know if there is some other people who can pretend to uh, uh, have win eight uh, JJ. So if you do it, you will be kind of the only one, no? Yeah, there's a lot of history in this class. You know, that's the best thing about it. You know, so. Yeah, it's an honour. I'm very lucky. I've been sailing with some very good guys the whole way through all those championships. I've had a different crew, a lot of them, and you know, I'm just sort of lucky to be sailing with really good guys. And I'm seeing uh, Jan Murray going around you is part probably uh, of uh, the key persons around you. How would you describe the effect he has on your team? Oh, he's like a mentor to, you know, means he's sort of been with us since we started. I think he got us to do the Channel 7 when we were 17 and sort of saw something in us, I don't know why. <laughs> and, you know, he's just, he's like a mentor to us the whole time. He's always, yeah. he's obviously got a very good eye on these boats. Technical wise, he's probably the best at it. And I'm just very fortunate, he, yeah, he helps in, us out. In design then? Exactly, there you go. <laughs> okay.